Hello, friend. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. This is Pastor Pitts Evans. On this podcast, we read and discuss one chapter of God's Word per episode. Let's go now to the Bible and see what the Lord has for us today. Romans chapter 10. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth, it is in your heart. That is, the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord over all, and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news! But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the words about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly proclaims, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, Isaiah says, All day long have I held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. As Paul writes, you can feel his burning passion for his Jewish people. He loved them deeply, and his greatest desire was that his Jewish friends and countrymen and blood relatives would come to know Jesus. He writes in verse 1, Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for the Israelites that they might be saved. The Passion Translation says it this way, My constant prayer to God is for my fellow Israelites to experience salvation. And so, in saying this, Paul is saying that the Jewish people without Jesus were not experiencing salvation, that the Israelites were not saved without the relationship with Jesus Paul was proclaiming to them and writing to them. Now, this is a very difficult thing to say, and it was very painful for Paul. But Paul did say those words. Paul went on to say that Jesus had fulfilled the law and initiated the new covenant. Verse 4, Christ is the culmination of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. And so if Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, then the law and the prophets pointed to the person, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And the new covenant was initiated with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so now faith is required, as it always was, of both Jew and Gentile. But what kind of faith? Faith for salvation found in Christ. Reading in verse 8 and 9, once again from the Passion Translation, But the faith righteousness we receive 
speaks to us in these words of Moses. God's living message is very close to you, as close as your own heart beating in your chest, and as near as the tongue in your mouth. And what is God's living message? It is the revelation of faith for salvation, which is the message we preach. And so I want to just pause a second before we go on with Paul's letter here, and I want to say a few things on my own part. And um, you can agree or disagree, but I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe the Lord calls for Christians like myself and hopefully like you to love the Jewish people unconditionally. Now, what does that mean, unconditionally love them? It does not mean love them until they convert and receive Jesus or love them as a pretext, all the while attempting to get them to abandon their faith and put their faith in Jesus. Unconditional love is just that. You love them without any preconditions that they must behave in any certain way. To say it a different way, my love for the Jewish people is not dependent on them agreeing with me as to who Jesus is. I'll say that again. My love for the Jewish people, for Paul's Jewish people and for Jesus's Jewish people, is not dependent on them agreeing with me that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. In other words, whether they ever agree to that or not, I'm still going to love them because God loves them. And so I believe that's what is required by Christians in every generation, that we would love the Jews unconditionally. Salvation came to us through our Jewish Messiah, and it is a duty and a privilege to love the Jewish people, to stand with the Jewish people, to pray for the Jewish people, not abandoning our belief that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God, but not loving them only on the basis of our hope that they'll agree with us that Jesus is the Son of God. We must love them unconditionally, whether they ever agree with us about who Jesus is. And Paul continues, though, and he says clearly that the Jewish people need to get saved. They need to enter into Christ. He's the fulfillment of the law. He says that. And I say that, too. However, whether the Jewish people agree with me or not, I'm still going to love them and support them and stand with them. So Paul says, how do you get saved, both Jew and Gentile? Verse 9, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord— and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And so this is not a formula, friends. This is not some kind of little magic that you speak these words and the magic takes place. No, he tells us what's required. You believe that Jesus is your Lord. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you speak it out. You declare openly, I submit to Jesus as my Messiah and Lord. And Paul says, it's with your heart you must believe and you're justified, but it's with your mouth you must profess your faith and be saved. And so it's two things. I've led many people in prayers of repentance and the so-called sinner's prayer where they they say they want Jesus to be their Messiah, that they believe Jesus is the Son of God, that they believe Jesus died for their sins, they believe Jesus was raised from the dead. They say the words, but the Bible says you not only say the words, that in your heart you must believe. And so it's this combination, the profession of faith, that's important, but also the belief in your heart. And the two together causes salvation to come. The old-time evangelist used to say, uh, that so many people made a profession of faith, and hopefully they were genuinely born again. So it's not enough to make a profession of faith. Faith in Jesus does get you saved. What kind of faith? Faith that you believe in your heart, that he's the Son of God, that he was raised from the dead. And with that, you're justified, and with your mouth, you profess your faith, and you're saved. Faith in Jesus eliminates the distinction between Jew and Gentile. Verse 12, Paul writing again, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That Lord he's talking about is the Lord Jesus. So there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. We must both call on the name of the Lord Jesus to be saved. And Paul goes on to tell us, faith comes by hearing the message from someone who is willing to share. Today it's me sharing. Perhaps it'll be you sharing as well today or some other day, but reading from Paul in uh, Romans 10, verse 14, how then 
can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? In other words, it's all well and good to believe. It's all well and good to pray. But somebody's got to speak about these things. Verse 15, how can anyone preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. And so, friends, if you've never felt sent to share the message of the salvation that's found in Jesus, I I give you permission today. I remind you that Jesus said, go, preach the gospel, make disciples of all nations. And the scriptures from Paul's words today in Romans tell us that faith comes by hearing the message. And so if the message is not preached, how can anyone, Jew or Gentile, come to a saving faith, a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Our faith must be mixed with our actions. And so the message of salvation in Christ has to come through believers. It's not going to come from anywhere else. The Lord has done his part. He lived a sinless life. He died a sacrificial death. He was buried, and the third day he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven. He commissioned us to go and tell the world the good news. That's the gospel. And so there are those who would say that God has no plan for the Jewish people. There are those who would say that God has a different way for the Jews to obtain salvation. I am not one of those. I believe that they must come to salvation through Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, just as you and I do. But my love for them is not contingent upon them doing that. My love for them is not contingent upon them believing as I believe. My love for them is based on my love for Jesus, my Jewish Messiah, who loves them. And so, Father, I pray that none of us would forget to remember your Jewish people who you love so much. Lord, may we be grateful in our hearts for them. May we have a passion for them. May we love them unconditionally. May we stand with them and defend them. Lord, we appreciate that Jesus came through the Jews to be our Jewish Messiah. Christ is indeed the culmination of the law. And Lord, we pray that you would help them to recognize their Messiah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.